to Aura here. How are you do, Demon? Hey. Whoa! Do you see what I see? It's a scorpion! Run! Hello there, Mr. Scorpion. Oh, look at you. Aren't you a scary little guy? Whoa, did you just grow eyes, man? Oh, you know what? That. <laughs> that was good. I didn't do anything. <laughs> hey. Welcome aboard, you guys. It's yet another fun math video. And I'm sorry, Scorpion. We're going to have to make you pretty small because you're blocking. You're blocking. There you go. We'll put you down here, okay? I like scorpions. I see scorpions all the time out on the trail. You know, since I'm a avid hiker. Anyway, we'll put them down there. Let's go ahead and take a look at our lesson today. As you can see, we are doing lesson 11.11. 11. That's right, two 11s. And our topic today is fine volume of composed figures. And composed, ooh, kind of a big word. Composed suggests that we have elements or parts of something that are being combined. And if you look at our essential question, which is our learning target, my friends, that's right. We are learning to target, no. We are targeting to learn. Nah, it doesn't work, does it, Mr. Wara? Mr. Wara, you might want to give that one up. Okay, so our essential question is, how can you find the volume of rectangular prisms that are combined? There's that word. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. Let's go ahead and unlock the problem. It says the shape at the right is a composite figure. It is made up of two rectangular prisms that are combined. How can you find the volume of the figure? All right, let's look at that. Hello, there we go, bring it on down. And then, okay, maybe I want to really miniaturize you, okay? You're a little less threatening that way. We'll put you right up there. All right, so here we go. One way is to use addition. It says that we could, step one, break apart the solid figure into two rectangular prisms. Ooh. I like how they use the color code. Very nice. If we're trying to find the volume of a figure, we need length times width times height. Those are those three dimensions, and that's what makes up volume. And I see the blue rectangular prism with a length of 10 inches. I see the width as 4 inches, and I see the height as 2 inches. The prism that's up on top, I do see the height from the very bottom to the very top as being six inches, but that's a problem because the rectangular prism up above, I mean, let me say it this way, where you see the bracket, it's suggesting from the very top to the very bottom is six inches, but to find the volume, I'm sorry, to find the height of the prism, the rectangular prism on top, it's not six inches high because it's sitting on top of another one. So we have to find a way to find the distance from the top of that prism to the bottom. How can we do that? It says find the length, width, and height of each prism. Okay, so they separated those two apart. Think, the total height of both prisms is six inches. We just talked about that. Subtract the given heights to find the unknown height. Okay, yeah, six minus two equals four. When we look at that one prism over here, there's our 10 inches in length, four inches in width, and two inches in height. So the blue rectangular prism, we're good, right? We're good, I'm good. But the green one, we're having a problem because we do have the width and we do have the uh, actual length, but we don't have the height. Well, how do they know to take six minus two? I don't think they explained that part of it, so let's take a look back up above. Dun, dun, dun. And there you can see the height here is two inches for the blue rectangular prism. And if the total height from the bottom all the way to the top is six inches, I see they're subtracting the two inches of the height of the blue rectangular prism. Yes, I think I understand now. So six minus two is four, so that would we were going to put a four in there. Let's put a four. There we go, numero cuatro. Now it says step three. Find the volume. Oh my goodness, what's this? It's another scorpion and it's got babies. Oh my, they, you know what's gonna, you know what happens there. They're gonna be all over my page now. Oh my goodness. All right, for the time being, I'm just gonna try to ignore him. Let's focus in on our problem. So it says find the volume of each prism. Volume is equal to length times width times height. We just talked about that. The length is 
2 inches, the width is 4 inches, and the height is 4 inches. Now we just have to multiply. I like 2. You know I like 2. 2 means we just double. So I'm going to multiply the 4 times 4 first. Get 16, and 16 times 2 is 32. Or at least the last time I did my math. And then over here we have length times width times height. Oh, we have 10 times 4 times 2. Oh my goodness, my two favorite numbers in the whole world. 10 and 2. 2 I double, 10. That's just doing a power of 10, adding a 0. Let's go ahead. I'm going to do the 8. 4 times 2 is 8. And then by a power of 10, it's going to give me 80. 80 inches cubed. And I get that nice little cube there. You see that number 3? That's right. Number 3 letting us know that there's those three dimensions. We have length, width, and height. Okay. Now we just add these volumes of the rectangular prisms because we're trying to find the total volume. So we have 32 plus 80 giving us a final of 112. Now, of course, we need our statement here. So the volume of the composite figure is 112 cubic inches. I like it. Now it says mathematical practice three. So let's take a look at what mathematical practice three says. Here we go. Mathematical practice three states that we construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. This is important. We do this in class all the time. Now it says here, it says that I can make conjectures and critique the mathematical thinking of others. And let's look at that. I can construct, making, justify. I have to back up my reasoning and communicate arguments. I can do this considering the context of the problem I'm looking at, using examples or non-examples, and using objects, drawings, diagrams, and actions. All of these things is part of math, is we want to be able to make those arguments, those statements, so that we can critique whether we agree or disagree with someone else. Here it actually says I can critique the reasoning of others by listening. Very important to hear what they have to say. Comparing the arguments. Identifying maybe flawed logic that's in maybe something that's being stated by another student. Asking questions to clarify or improve arguments. So there you go. Let's go ahead and look at the problem now. So here it says, what is another way you could divide the composite figure into two rectangular prisms? Well, the example above is not the only way this problem could be solved. It could be solved another way, by dividing the figure differently. For example, I, I look up above here and I can see that what's been done here is that they indeed separated the top part, okay, and separated this way. However, it could have been done another way. Instead of taking that part off, what we could have done is we could have actually taken this whole part, this being the front, right here, okay? and then going all the way across. This would have made this one here a little bit shorter. It wouldn't have been 10 inches across, but rather it would have been only eight inches across. We could have divided then two inches, okay, by four inches uh, and six inches. That's what we would have given us. We would have given us six, two, okay, and then we had this length here, which was four. That would have given us the green one. And then the other rectangular prism, like I just said, would be eight inches across. It would have been four inches, kind of deep here being the, the, the width, and then finally the height would be two inches. So let me go ahead and write those notes down. So there you go. There's my response to that question. Ding! Okay, next page. So another way, use subtraction. <laughs> Is there like a scorpion in the box? What are you doing? Is that one of the babies that's already escaped? Get out of there. Come on. Hey! Woo! Okay, let's get you. It says you can subtract the volumes of prisms formed in empty spaces from the greatest possible volume to find the volume of a composite figure. Hey, let's look at this one here. Step one, find the greatest possible volume. I see they have their dotted line indicating, okay, the space that's empty. So we could make it uh, one large a rectangular prism. So we'd have 10 inches going, uh, going across there. And then we have four inches for the width. And then we have, looks like, more than just two inches. Now, on this problem, it appears to me that they didn't provide us the information from the, the, the previous rectangular prism. There should be six inches in height. They didn't have that listed. If you didn't have that previous figure, you wouldn't know what the height is here because it's not indicating that. It gives us the 10 inches, the four. It's letting us know the height here is two inches. 
but it's not letting us know what that next space is from here to here. So now that we know that it is six inches high, we could say the length then would be 10, the width would be four, and the height is six. And of course, this is all mental math. Four times six is 24, power of 10, 240. So that would be the volume of that entire rectangular prism. No, again, another scorpion. My goodness, they're everywhere. Get out of here. Ah! Step two says find the volume of the prism in the empty space. Okay, so let's try to see if we can find the volume in there. And we have, it looks like, we have four. It's letting us know that that distance there is four. The height is four. And our length is eight. So we have width, height, and length. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put the length in here. And we can think of the length as that, was that 10? So they're saying subtract by the two inches that we had in the previous one would give us eight inches. The width is the four inches. And again, uh, we'll put that in there. And the height, in this case, remember the total height was six inches tall. So now we have two inches on the bottom part of that rectangular prism. Six minus two is four. Now again, we can multiply. Again, the reason why I like this particular one is I like the three, I like the eight times four, which is 32. And with four, it's like double twice. So I would say 32 times two is 64, double one more time. That gets me 128. Yeah, by all means, you could figure that out. Take 32 times four, uh, but that's the mental math and that comes in handy. Comment down below. Oh my goodness, what is this here? More scorpions. No, they're making like a marching line now, aren't they? More scorpions making a line. Look at that. Oh my goodness, they're all... Well, you know what? You can march right off the page. Goodbye. March right off the page. Goodbye. Okay, you're gone. Now, moving on. Step three. I'm going to see if this little magic trick will work. Abracadabra. Scorpions, be gone. Yes, it worked. Now, step three says subtract the volume of the empty space. Okay, and the empty space was one. Oh, subtract that. That was 100. Was it 128? It was. So we'll get our 128 in there. Okay, and then that was our full was 240. And we could just subtract. And what is that going to come out to be? 240 minus 128. Looks like I need to regroup here. Give him a 10, 2, 1, 1 looks like 112. Exactly what we got in that other problem. So it's going to be 112 cubic inches. Yeehaw! Okay, so let's look at the very last problem here. Let's just try this. Find the volume of a composite figure made by putting together three rectangular prisms. All right, now this is what can give, I think, and has given um, students problems when they do the volume of a composite figure is looking at all the dimensions. So it's important that you see which, what the numbers stand for, for each section. So if you look at the 12 feet, the 12 feet is written in front of that figure. And that's the distance from here to here. Okay. And the five feet it's written is this distance. So it's important that you see that. Look, we also have eight feet. Eight feet is the distance represented from the very bottom to the very top. So this is important that we know these numbers and where the numbers are placed on the figure to know what dimension it represents. For example, like the two feet inside of the figure, that one's letting us know that it's the distance um, of the height. It's going up. Over on the left side, we have four feet. That goes up a little bit higher. Here we have three feet. That's the distance, the width across. So it's important that we understand all these dimensions. Okay, and then finally we have five. And with that, that's going to help us determine uh, the height. Just to review, it's important that we look at each one of these dimensions carefully because volume is length times width times height. We want to make sure that we're doing the right figure. Let's do the one on the left. What I see here, I see a problem. I see the four feet. Let's be see the height. I see the three feet, but the three feet uh, is the distance there in the back. So what piece am I missing? I'm missing this part, which is the length. 
So what is that distance? I need to look at another part on the actual composite figure to see it. And I do see it. And it's five feet. You can see that that's five feet. That's the same distance as this distance up here. Because this figure, it's a rectangular prism, they all have right angles. And so you have two opposite sides are parallel, like we were learning with our two-dimensional figures. So with those right angles means that distance has to be the same because we have those right angles. That's going to be 5. So this first one would be then 3 feet times 5 feet. Remember where we got that 5 feet from? And then 4 feet because that's the height. And I end up with 15 times 4, which is 60. So I have 60 cubic feet. Now I'm going to go to the one in the middle. I see five feet there. Looks as to me as the length. I have the same distance for the width. Again, I'm going right back to that measurement we had here. See how these two are the same? OK, so I'm going to go ahead and put five then times five. Now I can't use four feet as the height because this one's a little bit taller. So how am I going to determine that one? I know it's 8 feet because actually they're giving me the bracket. So I know that it's 8 feet because they've given us that measurement. Now I have 40 times 5, which is 200. We have our 20, and then we have our power of 10. So now the smallest rectangular prism, I see that it does not give me the length. It gives me weight. So the length we need to determine, well, how can we determine that? We have 12 feet that goes that distance across. We have five feet for that middle rectangular prism. So I could take 12 minus five, which is seven. But I also have three feet over here. And that's the distance, again, for the length in front. So with that three and that five, that's eight. So 12 minus eight is four. That must mean then that distance here is four feet. So let's go ahead and put four feet here for the length. I know that I have the width is five feet. And then the height, this one's really small. It doesn't, oh, it does give me that measurement. It tells me it's two feet. That's inside the figure. It did give me that. So now I have 20 times two, 40. Now total volume, I'm adding them together. So I'm going to add 60 with 200. And I'm also going to add 40 onto that. And I'm going to get 300, looks like, because 40 and 60 is 100. Compatible numbers and 200. 300. Yeah, and I hear the music yipping in the background. You know what that means? That means this video again has come to a close. Woohoo! Hey, always one around the corner. Thank you again for joining me. Now, live long.